Hello everyone and welcome to a Waterstones haul. We have a channel favourite today. We are doing a huge Waterstones haul. Well, I think there's eight books we've just been and bought. We have a very, very full bag all the way up to the top. There is a huge mix of books in here. This has been the most difficult book shop that I've done in a while. Normally I go with a bigger shop and I normally go to Newcastle and they have like four fours. But today's haul has literally just came from the Morpeth branch of Waterstones and that is tiny. It's very, very small. And it had none of the books I was actually after. I'd saved loads on TikTok. I'd saved like loads of different themes of TikToks and they had, I think I looked for about 20 books and they had one. And then I read the blurb and I was a bit like, meh. So today was difficult. So I'm not, there's not any that I'm like really, well, there is, I think there's one or two that I'm quite excited to read, but we're gonna chat through them all. I'll explain why I've actually picked them up. We have one of Jack's books in here as well. So if you are new, Jack is my partner. He's kind of just getting into reading. He tends to focus mainly on sci-fi and fantasy. Yeah. yeah. The rest are for me and I said my genres are thriller, fantasy and a little bit of just anything but it's mainly thriller and then a little bit of fantasy thrown in. I haven't took them out of the bag yet so I'm literally just going to pull them out so these aren't going to be in any order and that's halfway through I'm, I don't want to like go with that order but I'm just going to pluck them out. Like I say none of these were wanted in terms of I went in there and wanted them. The only one that I went to look for was Day of Fall and Night, which is the prequel to Priory of the Orange Tree, which I think everybody has probably seen. I highly recommend this book. I love it. And the prequel is out now, but the prequel is only out in hardback and I am not a hardback kind of gal. I don't like reading them. I don't particularly like them. I, I feel like if I'm gonna buy a hardback, it's got to be a beautiful hardback under the dust cover. And this was just blue. Uh, so I'm gonna wait for it to come back out in paperback, however long that is gonna be. I'm sure I'll be fine. It's a mahusive book, so I'm fine leaving it for a little while and getting it how I actually want it. And then it can sit like, I don't know if it would sit next to it because I've got color coordinated. So the blue would actually go all the way up there. But you get my drift. That's the only one that I wanted and didn't get. They did have the hardback, but I just didn't get it. So let's see, first one that we plucked out what is Notes on an Execution by Dania Dukafka. Uh, should we, let's read the blurb because otherwise I haven't got a freaking clue what any of these are about. This was in the buy one get one half price table. That was the main reason I got this one. Oh, the sticker's leaving a mark. I had picked up mainly like fantasy books and I was, de I, I'm desperate for some thrillers. I, I'm very much in a reading slump at the minute. I have not been enjoying the books that I've been reading and I've wanted something like quick paced thriller gonna keep me in it. Or fantasy, if I can find something that's gonna keep me involved. But I was like, I want thriller. Could not find any that I like the look of. I do not like detective crime stuff. I mean thriller. I hope that, I hope people understand the difference. I don't want a detective grappling stereotypically with his ego and oh, I want a thriller that's got some thrilling aspects in it, not just a boring ass detective. And I was just looking on the on the on the tables that they've got out because, like I said, they didn't have any of the TikTok ones that I wanted. So that this one was one of them. So let's read about it. Ansel Packer is scheduled. scheduled. Ansel Packer is scheduled to die in 12 hours, but this is not his story. Ansel doesn't want to die, he wants to be celebrated, understood, yet now he awaits the fate he forced on those girls years ago. This is the story of the women who survive. As the clocks tick down, a mother, a sister and a detective reckon with the choices that culminate in tragedy, the impact on those in its wake and the possibility of redemption. And it's got like loads of quotes all over it. If I show you the cover, like literally all these tiny little text things are quotes. And the quote at the top was, upends the power dynamic of a male serial killer and female victim, impossible to look away from. So I thought it might be like a cool retelling, like not a typical kind of serial killer book. And it's nice and short as well. <laughs> Oh my god, the font is tiny. Great. It is 305 pages, but the font is very, very small. So <laughs> I thought it was gonna be a smaller one, but I, the, the cover is very intriguing. Those stickers are removable as well, by the way, because I 
freaking hate that. This one, fantasy. So this is Holly Black. Oh, what is it? Holly. <laughs> That's the name of the author. Book of Night by Holly Black. It is one of, right, I'm gonna say contro something controversial. It's one of those covers that have like the split cover. I actually really like them. I know people don't like them, and especially on BookTok, people don't like them, but I really like them. I have Malibu Rising. I have no idea where that's gone. It's either Malibu Rising or Jane Daisy Jones and the Sixes of this color, and I, I really like them. I'm not sure what people's beef about them are. I think it's because of what it says, but I, I really like it. And this is a beautiful book. I think it's a stunning colour. Let's read about it. Charlie Hall has never found a lock she couldn't pick, a book she couldn't steal, or a bad decision she wouldn't make. She spent half her life working for glow mists, glow mists ma magicians who manipulate shadows and guard their secrets greedily, creating an underground economy of grimoires, but to rob their fellow magicians, they need Charlie. Now she's trying to distance herself from past mistakes, but going straight isn't easy. When a terrible figure from her past returns, Charlie descends back into a maelstrom of murder and lies. Determined to survive, she's up against a cast of doppelgangers, mercurial billionaires, glow mists, and the people she loves best in the world, all trying to steal a secret that will allow them control of the shadow world and more. So it's kind of like... Mm -mm magic kind of vibes it's fantasy um i think it sounds like jack what's the series you like Solomon's. what Solomon's series. magicians the one you want me to read the naomi novak one yeah. it's called the solomons 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 oh but it's a deadly education that's the first book yeah. oh i didn't realize i had a name that kind of vibes, I haven't read that yet, but Jack absolutely loves them and I will get around to reading them at some point, but I felt like that had this kind of vibes. I am, um, I'm trying to find a magician thing to replace Harry Potter so I can get rid of all this stuff because FJK, but I like the sound of that. I feel like it's like a dark kind of magician type book and I'm excited for it. Prices wise, this one was 9 99 and this one was also 9 99 Since when are books 9 99 aren't they normally all 8 99 Book prices are going up as well. Next up is the other book in the buy one get one half price kind of deal and it's a Harlan Coben. I haven't actually read any Harlan Coben books but I've watched a few of the series. I can't remember what they're called, Stay Close and I think the Stranger was Harlan Coben, and then there was a one on Sky that I really, really enjoyed. What was that? Oh, it was actually Stay Close. That was the one that I, 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 I quite liked. But he also has The Stranger and Safe, which I think are quite popular. I think I tried doing the five as well, but I just couldn't finish it. And I like his kind of thriller, and I, I like how it's not just a whodunit kind of thing. There is other parts of it as well, like a bit more psychological. So I thought I'll try one of these books. So let's read the blurb. He is known as Wild, the boy from the woods. He has grown up knowing nothing about his parents and even less about his own identity until now. When a match on a DNA database puts him in the trail of a close relative, the only family member he has ever known, Wilde thinks he might be about to solve the mystery of who he really is. Only this relation disappears as quickly as he's resurfaced. Undaunted, Wilde continues his research, be becoming caught up in a secret community committed to exposing anonymous online trolls. Then one by one, people start to die, and it soon becomes clear that a serial killer is targeting this secret community, and that the next victim could be Wilde himself. It seems super complicated, like uh, like it's not just he doesn't know who he is, he's trying to find himself, there's also an anonymous online trolling group and stuff, it seems like there's loads of stuff in it. It's quite a big chunky thriller, uh, I do like my thrillers to be a bit shorter than that, let's see how many pages it is. Oh but the font is freaking huge, look how big this font is, absolutely insane. I was saying to Jack that I picked it up and it felt like I'd picked up a school book, like a book that I write in the school where it was big chunky font absolutely love that so i'm not as daunted by the size of it let's see 445 pages but the font's massive that one's 8.99 next up we have the house of the golden door by elodie harper so this is a sequel to where is it it was red so it is a sequel of the wolf den which i read i think about a year ago i think it was last year i'm not entirely sure it might have even been the year before so this i bought this one because it was everywhere on waterstones it was on the walls it was on the like tables it was everywhere so this one is about let's see if i can kind of tldr it so it's basically about a brothel in pompeii before 
the inevitable happened. And it's when the Romans and the Greeks are kind of like battling about Pompeii and there's just loads of slaves everywhere. And it was about one particular slave who's been put into a brothel and just basically about their life. So this came out and I think I read it like pretty much straight away and the sequel has just came out. I'm pretty sure it's literally like just come out. I'm not going to read the blurb because I don't want to spoil it for anybody who hasn't read this one but it is it is a good series. I'd say it's more of a slow burner type thing. It's not thrillery, nothing huge happens. It's definitely more of like a life story type thing and reading about the time of Pompeii but I am looking forward to reading the second one. Do you want to come and explain your one because I don't know I don't have anything to say about it. So this is Jack's book. Uh, Jack's gonna explain it because I have no idea what, because this is a part of like a series and I don't understand what's going on. Yeah, so there's um, three books so far in the Skyward series um, by Brandon Sanderson. Um, if you aren't into sci-fi, Brandon Sanderson is a big, big, big sci-fi writer and yeah. he's got like five different series all going on at once yeah. and Jack's reading this Skyward series that yeah. only has three books currently. Yeah, so I'm reading the third book now but these there's three stories in this one book um, and they're all stories from a different perspective of a different character. So the, the main books all follow Spencer on her journey and these all follow different side characters. So I think one of them follows one of her Friends, the other one follows. Um, yeah, the other one follows this alien who she um, um, impersonates for a while, and then the other one follows her love interest. So does it follow them while she's in it? So is it co-occurring? Yeah, with while, what while she's doing? elsewhere. While she's elsewhere, so not while she's in it. No, I don't think so. Anyway. Right. Okay. Well, there's three books in there. Yeah. Uh, so that was ten ninety nine, but it's a nice. It's not. It's not a bad size, yeah. and it does have the. You kind of see, like I think that's that's about the first book. Yeah. That's about the second book. So, Jack's going to count it as three books in one for, for his yeah. reading challenge, three even though it's... Three books? Three books. So, that's his book out of the way. Next up, I got Mexican Gothic. I think this is a TikTok book, but I think it was a TikTok book before I got on BookTok, so I don't... I'm not 100% sure that it is a BookTok book, but I'm, I recognise it. I'm not entirely sure. I just saw a picture of the author on the back and I don't know if she is Mexican. I'm hoping she is, seeing as though this is a book about Mexican people, I'm pretty sure. Doesn't have anything in about the author, about whether she is Mexican. I'm just gonna hope that she is. But anyway, let's read the blurb. Glamorous socialite Naomi, Na Noemi, 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 Taboda's life of parties and entertainment is interrupted when she receives a frantic letter from her newlywed cousin who is begging to be rescued from a mysterious doom. Noemi immediately heads to High Place, an estate in the mountains of Mexico owned by the secluded Doyle family, determined to discover what is troubling her beloved cousin. The fortunes of the silver mining Doyles have eroded and their house is a d dilapidated relic. Even more worrisome are the inhabitants of High Place. There's the alluring yet menacing new husband, his foreboding father, and other taciturn relatives. Soon the house begin itself begins invading Noemi's dreams with visions of blood and doom. She must tread carefully, for there are many secrets behind the walls of High Place, and Noemi may soon find it impossible to leave this enigmatic house behind. So this kind of sounds like a thriller as well. I It's one of those ones that I kept seeing the cover, and I was like in love with it, and I was like, oh, I'll get it next time, I'll get it next time, and I finally got it, so I'm very pleased. It is a lovely size book, nice and thin. I don't read enough thin books, so I'm very, very pleased with that. This one was... 9.99 again, but I am very much looking forward to it. I'm, I'm hoping that keeps me gripped. Next up we have the Poppy War. So I've heard amazing things about this. I This is literally just buying it off reputation alone. I don't think I even read the blurb when I was in there because just everybody goes on about how good the Poppy War is on TikTok. So, oh God, it's a long blurb. I'll try and talk quick. When Rin aced the Keiju, the test to find the most talented students in the Nikara Empire, it was a shock to everyone. That she got into Sinagard, the most elite military school in Nikan, was even more surprising. But surprises aren't always good, because being a dark-skinned peasant girl from the south is not an easy thing in Sinagard. Fighting the prejudice of rival classmates, Rin discovers that she possesses... possesses? <laughs> possesses a lethal, unearthly power, an aptitude for the nearly mythical art of sh shamanism. Exploring her gift with the help of seemingly insane teacher, 
Rin learns that God's long thought dead were very much alive and that mastering these powers could mean more than just surviving school. For while the Empire is at peace, the Federation of Mu Mugen still lurks across a narrow sea. The Federation occupied Nikan for decades after the First Poppy War and only barely lost the continent in the Second. And while most people calmly go about their lives, a few are aware that a third poppy war is just a spark away. That sounds like a mix between Iron Widow and the Gilded Ones. <laughs> so I'm excited, but it does sound like a mix between Iron Widow and Gilded Ones. So we'll see how it goes. I'm hoping I enjoy it. I, I've, I've heard really good things about it. And this one was $8.99. Next up, we had a um, last minute pickup. It's called Do No Harm by Jack Jordan. This was recommended by the person who was serving us at the till. I uh, saw that I had quite a few thrillers and she was like, do you like thrillers? I was like, yes, I do. And she went and picked it up and she was like, I've just finished reading this. Really, really good. And I was like, is it a thriller though? Or is it a crime book? And she's like, it depends on you. Definition of thriller. But I would say it's kind of more along Gillian Flynn vibes. And I was like, give me it. Because Gillian Flynn is my favourite thriller books. I love them. They are so freaking mental. That is the type of thriller book that I want. So, I haven't even read the book. She described it to me as, let's just read the book. Uh, my child has been taken and I've been given a choice. Kill a patient on the operating table or lose my son forever. The man lies in front of me. As a surgeon, it's my job to save him. As a mother, I know I must kill him. You might think that I'm a monster, but there really is only one choice. I must get away with murder or never see my son again. I've saved many lives. Would you trust me with yours? So, it sounds thrillery. I'll see how it goes. But the woman behind the counter loved it. And one of the quotes on the back is fans of the silent patient and the woman in the window will love it. I loved woman in the window. Didn't love the silent patient, but... It's that kind of vibe that I like. Okay, last one. This is the one that I picked up first and I'm actually really excited to read and look at how thin it is. <laughs> Buzzing. I'm so excited to read it. So let's, now an Amazon Prime film. I didn't know that. Oh, well, I'm glad it doesn't have a sticker on the front. Yeah. So this is The Mad Woman's Ball by Victoria Mass. Let's read the blurb so you can understand why I'm excited about it. Oh God, it's a French word. Sal Petrier, the Salpetrier <laughs> Asylum, 1885. All of Paris is enthralled to Dr. Charcot and his displays of hypnotism on women who have been deemed mad or historical. Historical? <laughs> historical. Cannot read to save my life. <laughs> but the truth is more complicated. These women are often inconvenient, unwanted wives or strong willed daughters. Once a year, a grand event is held, the Mad Woman's Ball. For the Parisian elite, it is the highlight of the social season. For the women themselves, it is a rare moment of hope. Genevieve is a senior nurse who has placed her faith in Dr. Charcot and his new science, but everything changes when she meets Eugenie, the daughter of a bourgeois family. For Eugenie has a secret and she needs Genevieve's help. Their fates will collide on the night of the Mad Woman's Ball. Oh excited for this one. It sounds like psychological. It's got an asylum in it. It's in 1885. Oh, and look how skinny it is. I also think the cover is absolutely beautiful and the back is also just as stunning. I'm very excited for this one. It's very rare to find like a good, I don't know if I'd call this a thriller, but you know what I mean, like a tense book that is short. So I'm very excited. This was 8 99 so that is all of them. If you have any recommendations for that type of thing, fantasy, I would like some smut. But I have no idea what is good smut because I tried reading, what's that one? The, what's it called? Touch of Darkness. Wow, that's a bad book. <laughs> Did not enjoy that. So if you have any recommendations for fantasy good smut, please leave them below. And also your favourite thrillers. I've read all the like the popular ones like The Silent Patient and the majority of Lisa Jewel books. So if you have any good recommendations, please let me know because I was lost today. I was absolutely lost in buying books. And I would love to get out of my reading slump. I really want to get out of this reading slump and be able to get back into my reading. I've got a reading goal of 25 this year and I've read three. <laughs> oh God, that's terrible, isn't it? We're in April. <laughs> so help me out, help people read watching this video out by commenting some good recommendations below. If you are new, hello, please subscribe. Would love to have you here. Let me know if you'd like to see more bookie videos because I do enjoy doing them. But that is it for this haul. There are eight, I think this looks more like more than eight books, babe. Are you sure this is eight? 
There's ten books here, Jack. Oh. There's not eight, there's ten. And that's in saying your book that you're going to count as three is one. So there's, 12. there's twelve books here, really. I'm sorry that I was lying to you. There's ten books here. You've had a bigger haul than you anticipated. If you want to follow me on Storygraph, I'll leave my username below because uh, if you want to know what I think of these books, I will be writing reviews on there because I do do a book at the end of the year going through all the books that I read this year. But that's not till January 2024. So follow me on there if you want to. Subscribe if you are new and hopefully I shall see you in another video. Bye.